Hello and welcome to the Safi Learning Center. The structure presented in this video is a composite bridge with a concrete slab on a steel girder. The bridge has three spans. I have previously activated the bridge and steel toolbar. First, I will present the steel beam properties. The steel material has already been set for this example. The same goes for the concrete. The beam has a height of 1.8 meters. Let us now see the required information in the composite tab. The slab thickness has been defined to 200 millimeters and is associated to a concrete material. There are two ways to define the reinforcement in the slab. The first is to specify the total amount of steel required along the width of the slab and to set the spacing at zero. The second method is to find the area of one bar and to set the spacing at the required value. The bar's position has to be specified. The position is relative to the top of the slab. In addition here, we have to specify the effective width of the slab. In this case, three meters. In this example, a width of 4 meters will be used for self-weight. Next, we need to define if there is a steel deck or not. In this example, we use a ribbed steel deck. If no decking is used, the slab will be considered flat. Then, we need to define the orientation of the ribs, whether it is parallel to the girder or perpendicular. The height of the rib HD is set at 100 millimeters. Next, we define the number of studs per rib. In this case, we use two studs per rib. We can access the stud specifications here. The properties of the studs are the ultimate strength, the diameter, and the height of the stud. Once the analysis and the design are completed, the software will tell us the amount of studs required for the different portions of the beam, either in positive moment or in negative moment portions of the beam. In this model, each span has more than one member. The negative moment areas will be found especially near the interior supports. For that reason, we must divide the beams where the bending moments change sign. The beams that are in a positive bending zone have full composite inertia, including the effect of the slab in compression. The beams that are near the interior supports are associated with a negative bending moment which only takes into account the presence of the reinforcement's intention. The steel beam lateral supports can be defined in the steel tab. The top flange lateral supports and the bottom flange lateral supports can be defined separately for both positive and negative bending moments. The lateral supports are needed before the composite action is effective. We have to specify the spacing between the top and bottom lateral supports in order to calculate the lateral torsional buckling bending resistance of the beam. Because the web of the beam is slender, we need to specify the stiffener's configuration. The stiffener's configurations are defined here. We'll find different types of stiffeners in SAFI, transverse, bearing, and longitudinal. We can get an overview of the stiffeners defined in the model here. We will have bearing stiffeners at the supports and transverse stiffeners along the beams. Overall, these stiffeners will improve the shear strength of the beams. SAFI supports multiple shapes of stiffeners. We can also specify the dimensions associated with the stiffeners. For example, the bearing stiffeners, which are located above the first inner support, are tripled with a spacing of 150 millimeters. Let's see what is specified in basic charges. To simplify this model, we only added the self-weight of the structure. 
The blue arrow here confirms that the self-weight of the structure has been activated. The asphalt load, or any other permanent loads, and the moving loads have been defined. In the case of a composite bridge, different basic loads will be applied at different construction stages of the bridge. The permanent loads are those that would be considered before the composite action is active, so only the steel beam has a structural effect. The additional dead loads will be considered as long-term loads that are applied after the composite action is effective. The moving loads will be considered as a short-term load on a beam where the composite action is active. These stages will be considered in the analysis. I will now change the view of the members from solid to hidden. This example is a bridge evaluation using the S6 standard. In the steel tab, we specified to use the bridge standard. The other settings were left to their default values. We are now ready to run the analysis. We can notice that there are different analysis steps. We will separately analyze the dead load for the steel beam alone. Then, the additional dead load that considers the total inertia of steel beam, including the long-term effect for concrete deformation for dead loads as the asphalt. Also, the moving loads are analyzed using the composite section considering the short-term effects. The steel verification module is activated. In this example, the verification has been processed using the S6 code. The first results that we will look at are the member forces. We can also look at the factored bending moment envelope curves. Or, for example, the shear forces envelope. We can also look at the results using a graphic for one physical member at a time. I will select the Combined Forces Envelopes. This allows me to select more precisely the results at specific locations on the bridge. For example, we can display the bending moments around the strong axes. If it is required to get bending moments at a specific location between 25,000 and 25,750 millimeters, we can interpolate these values. I will first try to identify the minimum bending moments in this zone. We can interpolate all the values by specifying the 25,500 location. We can confirm that the interpolated value is somewhere inside the expected range. We can go more in detail in the verification by looking at the limit states. Since the beam is made of steel, we can visualize the limit states in colors according to the applicable color codes. When the displayed results are in red, the strength is insufficient. All other colors mean that the limit state ratio is correct. Remember that the limit states represent a ratio of the force divided by resistance. If you close this window, you can see the same results in a table. For example, the summary of limit states. In this case, since there is an evaluation, the live load capacity factors are also available. We can verify the live load capacity factor, which indicates the truck ratio, which can be applied on the current structure. You can sort the minimum column by clicking the header. When the truck ratio is greater than 1, the resistance of the bridge is adequate. Since it is a composite beam that is verified, we will be interested to see the results of composite beams that are in this section of the analysis toolbar. I will select two members to focus on these. We can verify the resistance of the composite beams. Here we find two composite beam members, 1 and 2. Among others, we can see some results. For those who are familiar with Chapter 14 of the code S6, 
we can find all the necessary results for the flexural strength in positive bending moment, including full composite action, flexural strength in negative moment with current unsupported length of 7 meters and the critical length of about 10 meters in this case. A little further in the columns, we can visualize the limit states. At any time, you can click on the help button if we do not exactly remember the meaning of a given column. In this case, for example, DCB divided by D will tell us the total height of the compression beam. In positive moment, a very small portion of the beam is in compression. This is to say that the neutral axis ends up in the web of the beam close to the upper flange. When looking a little bit closer at the value, it's almost 10% of the beam height that is in compression in this case. The DC value indicates the height of the web which is compressed. The method of calculation, which was used for the resistance of the composite beam, in this case, is a plastic stress distribution on the steel section. Let's have a look at the other results for the composite beam. The flexural strength and positive moment of the previous table takes into consideration the composite action of the slab. In the additional results, we can also see the resistance of the steel beam alone before the composite action is effective. Now, still in composite beams, we can see the number of studs required at the beam slab interface. It shows the number of studs required in a manner which resembles what normally is calculated by hand. We can see horizontal shear force, and we can also find the number of studs required to resist the horizontal shear force between the steel beam and the concrete slab. The number n we see is not the total number of the entire structure. It is, rather, the number n required in different areas ranging from the maximum bending moment value and the zero moment. We must multiply the value n to know the total number of required studs for the total length of the beam. Also for the steel results, we can go see the stresses in service. These stresses are displayed for the service load combinations. Since the used section is not the same for all stages of analysis, the software presents the efforts and the stresses that apply to every stage of the analysis. For example, the bending moment under the permanent load will generate an associated stress applying to the steel beam. The same principle applies to the other types of loads. Cumulative stresses are displayed to ensure that there will be no steel yielding in service. In this model, there are also stiffeners. We can visualize the results associated with the shear in the panels. For the transverse stiffeners, we can verify the beam strength along the beam for each panel according to the spacing of the stiffeners. You can view the shear and bending forces associated with them. The shear limit states are also displayed. Where executing a bridge evaluation, live load capacity factors are also available. We should also check if transverse stiffeners meet the criteria of minimum inertia and area. There are also bearing stiffeners. Several results are available. Resistance to yielding of the web, the buckling of the web, the bearing strength, and the resistance for equivalent column formed by the bearing stiffeners. These results are verified at support reactions. Then, the associated limit states are obtained. This concludes this example.
I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos and information, please visit our website at www.safi.com.